pay after Pentecost. Uh, this is also also the last Sunday of this month. Can you believe it? We're officially in summer. We're filling in, yeah. <laughs> but it's nice and cool in here, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. And it's uh, such a uh, beautiful day today, and I'm uh, so glad to see each and every one of you that are here uh, with us this morning. And as we uh, begin uh, to gather our thoughts and our uh, hearts and our souls, preparing our minds for worship, I greet you in these centering words. Lead us, Holy Spirit. Guide us in the power of your ways that we may grow in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Please stand as you are able, in body or in spirit. I welcome our liturgists this morning to lead us in the call to worship. Sing the almighty power of God. Peace and patience, even when restlessness and 
distractions. Shower us with joy and hope when fear and despair are all around. Bear your roots in our lives through the power of your grace and forgiveness that we may be children of your spirit, living by your power and following where you lead in gratitude and trust. Any other joys or concerns? 
and I know there are many uh, joys and concerns that are uh, in your hearts, uh, in your prayers that are not spoken um, out. I encourage you to keep them in your prayers and your hearts and uh, continue to keep uh, our country in prayer. Uh, as for many of us, uh, I'm not going to go into details, but many of us have our own uh, beliefs and our own opinions on what's, ongoing, what's going on in the country, but I, I encourage you to just keep our country lifted in prayer, uh, the rights and the well-being uh, for all human beings, uh, for all our women, all our children, uh, and all our men, that we continuously pray for wisdom, for peace, and for comfort. Uh, so Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Any other joys or concerns uh, to be spoken before I go into our June birthdays and anniversaries? No? Okay. <clears throat> then we've come to our June uh, birthdays and anniversaries, and, and this is the Morocco Basin list. And so I believe this is the most updated list, but I could be wrong. So I'm going to read uh, the names for our June birthdays. And if you have a birthday in June, or you know of someone who has a birthday in June and they're not, uh, and I didn't read their name, please let me know so that way I can uh, update the list so then by next year or today we can add the names uh, of our June birthdays. And as you can see here on the, our TV screen, the names are listed there as well. So our June birthdays are <clears throat> uh, McKenna Stalbert, uh, celebrated their birthday June 4th. We have Ava McCall, who celebrated her birthday June 5th. We have Chris Mills, who celebrated their birthday June 6th. We have Heather Murray, uh, even though Heather is not here with us, but uh, we continue to keep her in our thoughts, our prayers, and our hearts. So Heather celebrated her birthday June 15th. Uh, we have Sue McMahon, or McMahon, that celebrated June 21st. We have Karen Masaros, or Masaros, who celebrated June 26th uh, today. So today's Karen's birthday. And then we have Victoria Dahlberg, who will celebrate June 29th. Are there any other June birthdays uh, here at 29 that I didn't call or list that we know of? Is that everyone in June? I believe, okay, then we have an updated list. <laughs> and um, I know we don't have any of them here with us today, uh, but I'd like to invite you to sing happy birthdays to them. And so we're sending, uh, hopefully they can feel our uh, love and our thoughts uh, as they celebrate in whichever way uh, they celebrate for their birthday. So please join me in singing happy birthday to our uh, beloveds that celebrate in June. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So our anniversaries for June, uh, for the list that I have for the Morongo Basin, um, as listed, and please let me know if I missed anyone in June. Uh, so we have June 1st, Charlene and Caroline Ryan Moore. We have June 4th, John and Jackie Rumpel. And then yesterday, June 25th, we have Ruth and Joe Kreitz. Do we have any other anniversaries uh, that was celebrated or to be celebrated in June? that I did not read. Well, I think that's it then, okay? I think our list is uh, getting updated and <laughs> I'm glad that we didn't miss anyone. So uh, I invite you to sing happy anniversary uh, to those uh, couples that uh, celebrated, will celebrate in the month of June and we send them our uh, love and blessings and many more years uh, as a union uh, under God uh, in love. And so I invite you for us to sing happy anniversary Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And many
those that celebrated their anniversary. So at this time, I invite you to be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. Friends and siblings in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgiving and our petitions on behalf of the church and the world. Lord God, your son Jesus has untied our burdens and healed our spirits. We lift up the prayers of our hearts for those that are still burdened, the, uh, those that are seeking healing, those in need within the church and the world. Hear our prayers that we may love you with our whole being and willing to share the concerns of our neighbors. Lord, as we have spoken uh, the names that are dear to us, uh, the celebrations, uh, the requests, the concerns that we have lifted up to you, Lord. We ask you to please take all these names and situations dear and dear to us. Take it upon uh, your arms, Lord, and grant those that ask for uh, healing, for those who ask for comfort, for those who ask for peace, and for those who are giving thanks for the many blessings that you continue to bestow on them. Please, Lord, be with all those who uh, continue to seek your heart, for those that are here, for those that are not here. Please, Lord, give wisdom and guidance to those who uh, lead this country, to lead this state, to lead this uh, town, this city, and for them, Lord, to do all the things that uh, you call them upon to do so that we can continue to proclaim your word, to continue uh, to witness to your love, to witness to your word. In Jesus' name we pray the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
gentleness and self-control, there is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Respond to the word. Praise be to God.
annual conference is uh, done and completed. Uh, that uh, confirming as of July 1st, the bishop has reappointed me to continue serving the Morongo Basin Corporate Parish as your pastor. Thank you. And so I um, just wanted to confirm that with you all because I know some. I was actually kind of surprised that a couple people asked, and it was, I was like, oh, you know what? I forgot. I, didn't make that announcement, uh, but I wanted to wait until after annual conference, uh, so it is official. Um, I will be serving uh, here in the new appointment year uh, as your pastor, and I've been so blessed these past uh, two years. I can't believe how quickly you know two years have come. So it's an anniversary for all of us, not just me, uh, but for you, 29 Palms, and myself. Uh, we'll celebrate an uh, anniversary of two years next next Sunday. Well, officially it's the 1st of July, but as far as worship, it'll be uh, next Sunday. So I just wanted to announce that for those of you who didn't receive uh, the email. Uh, Nancy or Nancy or Renee, is there any other announcements that you wanted to add? Oh, um, there's some food that's working now um, in the okay. area support. So if somebody wants to use we can turn on. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for your diligence and your efforts and, and hard work. And for those who have uh, helped uh, Renee along the way, thank you all. So thank you so much. So other than that, if we don't have any other announcements, I invite you to stand uh, as you are able, embody your spirit for our second hymn. Uh, our second hymn is found in our Blue United Methodist Hymnal Book, number 389, Freely, Freely. Three, eight, nine, freely, freely. <clears throat> to read along. It's uh, printed in our bulletin or on the screen. And this is how it's written. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, 
Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. These are the inspiring words of God for the people of God. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Please be seated. Pray with me. Dear Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So my uh, sermon title this morning is titled, Worthy of Christ's Love. Worthy of Christ's Love, based on our uh, gospel reading this morning. And so in our Bible passage for this morning, as we've heard, uh, Luke reminds us that upon the completion of his ministry in Galilee, Jesus makes up his mind to go to Jerusalem. And this would become his final journey to Jerusalem. Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem, as we heard. Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem is a fancy uh, way of saying Jesus is headed towards Jerusalem and there is no turning back. Jesus knew. Jesus knew why he had come down from the Father and was born as a man to go and fight a battle against sin and evil, which no one else could fight. Jesus knew what would be a price for his victory, his rejection, his suffering, and death on a cross. And it required a lot. It required a lot of determination and willpower to set to do this. And so at this time, or at that time, uh, rather, at that time, his disciples still had a very different understanding of what Jesus' mission is and what kind of uh, savior he is. They had seen his unbelievable uh, power to heal all sickness, to raise the dead and cast out demons, and even silence nature when it caused trouble. Jesus had the power to do, as we read and heard that as they were going through Samaria, some of the villagers didn't welcome them. And so what did Jesus' disciples say? Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? Kind of an Elijah moment uh, for those of you who read the lectionary this week. A pretty self-righteous question for some uh, rookie disciples. And Jesus, Jesus lets them have it. Not the fire they asked for, but what for, and it was time to head down the road. Not that they could do it on their own, but by invoking Jesus' authority, as he gave them the power to cast out demons and heal the sick, he could, and it was possible, he could give them the power to call fire down from heaven to destroy these stubborn and hostile villagers. And so does that sound familiar? Uh, does that reaction sound familiar to what we witness or to what we know? And can some of us relate to that? And I'm not speaking directly to you, but just from what we've witnessed from our uh, fellow uh, uh, companions, our neighbors, uh, just you know the world itself. 
And some might agree that it is much easier to react this way. When someone is hostile towards us, we want to repay them with the same. But thanks to God, we don't have the power to call fire from heaven or we'd all be in trouble. But maybe, maybe these villagers really deserve this kind of greeting to remind them who is who. But what Jesus did, Jesus turned and rebuked them. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In our Gospel of John, chapter 3. And so Jesus never uh, uses his divine power against any of us. His patience was and is incredible. If we had this kind of power uh, like Jesus uh, does, we would almost certainly go on the road of cleansing this world of all wickedness. Even those outside of the church uh, often disapprove of God that he doesn't destroy those evil doers. But God sees that the enemy is not among us. No enemy is within us or within each any of us. That's just our flaws. It's our flaws having a chance from time to time to show some of its ugliness uh, in, in, in faith and sometimes in our life. And so while uh, he and his disciples are on their way, Jesus encounters a variety of different people of all types that we heard from our uh, scriptures. And just to describe, the first person Jesus encounters along the road could be uh, thought of or known as or seen as an idealist of one who says to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus senses that he might have the wrong idea about this being called the life of discipleship. And so he administers this little test of expectations. Foxes have holes, said Jesus, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. We don't know exactly what this first would have been disciple is expecting, but he might be thinking that Jesus the Messiah is going to be his meal ticket. A meal ticket to such dreams of comfort and wealth. But Jesus gives him a rude wake-up call. You want life and luxury? He seems to be asking. Well, you're looking in the wrong place. Bible commentary reminds us that if the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, then neither will those who follow him. A short time later, Jesus sees another potential disciple. This time, someone that's described as a, a pragmatist, responsible, reasonable, and rational. Someone who has passed the initial round of screenings and seems, seems to be a, a good candidate for discipleship. So Jesus extends the invitation, follow me. But the guy says, Lord, let me go and bury my father. Even though the burial of the dead was binding on all devout Jews, Jesus changed the rules mid-game. If you're going to play the game with me, and then let the dead bury the dead. In other words, let those who have refused to follow me, that is, those who have chosen death, bury the dead. It may also be appropriate for us to remember that the burial process for the ancient Jew involved much more than just showing up at the graveside for a memorial service. It was a long, drowned out process that could take up uh, to more than just uh, to accomplish, uh, to take up at least a year to get things settled and maybe complete. And when I was uh, writing this and, and, and reflecting on it, it reminded me of my own culture. Because in my culture, uh, our memorial funeral services, depending on the families that want to continue practicing our culture, uh, takes up to a year, because we mourn for a year. And for those of you who, who know when I wear black, 
someone in my family or distant uh, relative have passed away. And so uh, we come to, uh, two weeks ago, my grandfather's brother, the last of them, passed away. Uh, my mom's cousin passed away the week after, and uh, I have a cousin that just passed away four days ago. And so just being all that put together, um, my family sometimes decides when, when we will, how long we will wear black. Uh, for most part, it's supposed to be a year, but uh, I'll take weeks at a time. But just something to share with you, an experience to this uh, scripture reading. And I uh, respect and love all cultures that still practice uh, their traditions and their upbringing in ways that we celebrate life and death. But not only, not only did the body have to be prepared for burial in this time uh, of the devout Jews, but it had to be prepared with perfumes and spices. And it also had to be placed in a temporary tomb in which the body would rot, leaving behind only dry bones. And so once the bones were dried, then and only then, those bones were taken and placed in a box and then buried in the ground. And so even though Jesus sounds harsh here, because I know some people were like, oh, you know, Jesus kind of sounds a little bit mean on that, and more than a little insensitive, what he's trying to say, and this is uh, based on commentary and uh, history, and uh, you can uh, decide on what your reflection and thoughts of it, but it's saying that if we want to be, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to focus on life and not death. Put your energy into proclaiming the kingdom of God, not into digging holes for the dead bodies. For Jesus, the primary focus of discipleship is upon the living and the life-giving power of the resurrection. Discipleship is the conscious choice of choosing life over death. And it's about the proclamation of the life-giving power of the resurrection, not about the life-draining power of death. And so finally, uh, another uh, constituent or another uh, candidate or applicant comes across, known as a procrastinator, and approaches Jesus and says, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. And this is too much, we may think. Let the poor fellow bury his father. Don't be so harsh, Jesus. We need to understand what the saying meant to those who heard it. And we know that Middle Eastern society has always been very patriarchal. The roles of fathers is still incredibly important there, even today. There was a saying, to bury my father, which meant to live in obedience to what traditions require as long as the father is still alive. When this man said, let me go and bury, we could translate it as, let me live according to the expectations of my culture, and only then, when I'm done with them, I will follow you. We all have so many expectations. We barely have time to fulfill all of them. When you were a child, or if you were a child, you need to have time and enjoy being a child to play. When you uh, grow to be a teenager, or when you were a teenager, you needed to be involved in so many activities just to, uh, to, to learn how life was uh, coming along. And if you do so, you can be something. If not, then you would think, well, who am I? Because you're still growing. And when you were a young adult, or if you are a young adult, you might have had a job, or you might continue in your studies, uh, have fun and establish yourself in life. And you could be proud of yourself. And then maybe one day, when you decide to start a family, or for those of us who have families, to raise our children, can look past and reflect on that. And these are all very important things. They're very important. Jesus, I'll do all of this and then follow you, right? 
And I know that every day I ask that, I'm like, Jesus, if you just give me one more day, if you just let me finish this email, if you just let me finish this up, just one more day, and, and I'll continue to serve your people. Uh, you know, and it's, and it's natural for us humans. But when, as we get older, we might not have that same energy left. We might need to take things a little easier because we deserve rest. And then eventually, we'll pass on from this life. And then it's too late. It's too late to follow Jesus. Not Christ, but your unbelief condemns and excludes you from the fellowship with our true God. So just think about it. Think about who is the one who calls. It is God himself. God calls us because he wasn't too busy to become a man, to live as one of us so that we can learn more about him. He wasn't too busy to die on the cross, not because of his sins, but because of ours, because of yours and mine. And he wasn't too busy because God has time and finds the time. And he is still not too busy to send his gospel message to everyone, telling about our ickiness and graciously offers us healing. The healing in which he purchased by his own blood. But people are just too busy to accept it. And so Jesus hits the reject button with the words, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus will not let the would-be disciple turn aside from the call to follow him, even to bid farewell to his family. If one looks back while plowing, the furrow will be crooked. On the way to the cross, there is no place for rash promises or misunderstanding regarding the cost of following Jesus. As it turns out, none of these people were compatible with Christ. Not the idealist, not the pragmatist, not the procrastinator. They all wanted to enjoy the ride, but that's as far as they were willing to go. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with enjoying the ride, but when it comes to Jesus, we aren't talking about joy rides or games, because discipleship is not a game. It's the constant choice of choosing life over death, choosing light over darkness, choosing love over hate, and choosing Jesus over the ways of this world. And that's why we're worthy of Christ's love, because compatibility with Christ involves radical commitment, total intensity, and complete focus. We are worthy of Christ's love. Because today's scripture teaches that discipleship is all about discovering our deepest fulfillment as human beings. That in spite of who we are, whether we are the idealist, whether we are the pragmatist, or whether we are the procrastinator, that in spite of our brokenness, our flaws and sin, we are made compatible with Christ by God's love. By the love of God, who wants nothing more than to walk along with us on this way, on this journey, on this path. Amen. As we gather ourselves in thoughts of reflection, I invite you to stand for our closing hymn found in our uh, The Faith We Sing. Number 2130. 2130, the summons. And we'll give everyone a, a few minutes to turn to their books. 2130, the summons. Please stand as you are able in body or in spirit. Our speaker goes to sleep on his phone, so we have to we have to wake it up. <laughs> technology for you. <laughs>
do. Bring love, joy, peace, and patience to everyone you meet. Share kindness, gentleness, and generosity in every encounter. In doing so, you not only live by the Spirit, you bring the Spirit with you. Go in God's love and peace. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> 